Just give me a minute. Take your time. Did everybody remember their homework? Uh, no. The dog ate my homework. Uh, shucks. Um, at the end of last week, I said I'm giving everybody homework. Yes. Uh, what I had said last week. What I had said last week. And why am I getting an echo? Well, okay, there it goes. Uh, in any event, um, what I said last week is that what I want to do is start a discussion about Kaddish. And I ask everybody to think about what I, I'm going to make a, a, an assumption here. Uh, and looking around, I'm probably accurate uh, in that um, all of us at one time or another have had to uh, have had the occasion that we've had a loss and had to say Kaddish. Uh, Am I correct at that? Um, yep. So what I, what I want to discuss is what, what do we get out of saying Kaddish? What is the impact that we, it has on us personally? <clears throat> um, and, you know, the thing is, we know that I mean, if, if, if we ask around, everybody can tell us, you know, the legalities of Kaddish. Um, you may or may not know the history of how Kaddish got into the Tefillot, or even how um, Kaddish became, has become known as the Mourner's Prayer. Um, and, and in our, uh, our culture, uh, Kaddish pops up in a lot of different ways besides uh, just uh, besides just as a uh, a mourner's prayer in in our services um, there are a lot of dramas there are a lot of novels um, I I remember back to a time when I was an undergraduate and I went to the, uh, the Hillel encampment up at Camp Brith at the end of the summer. And it happened that the uh, Yontif that year was very early because you know, Yontif is either early or late and never on time, you know that. Um, and as part of the encampment it, that Saturday night uh, was Slichot. And I remember very vividly uh, how Zalman, Rabbi Zalman Schachter, who was leading the Slichot service up there, um, started out by reading the first part, the first part of the text of Leonard Bernstein's Kaddish Symphony. Um, yeah, anybody familiar with it? Yes, I, I, I saw it many years ago. Many years ago, me too. Um, actually, I don't think I've ever seen it performed live, but uh, I remember being very impressed with the opening paragraph and I went out and bought it, listened to it several times and decided I wasn't sure if I liked the music, but, <laughs> but in any event, um, it starts off in, in the opening passages Oh Lord, I want to say the Kaddish. Help me to say the Kaddish. Um, and it goes on from there. Um, so yes, I think you know Kaddish is well wrapped up. So anybody want to take a stab as how Kaddish became known as the Mourner's Prayer? No, nobody has a clue. Uh, we know that the word, 
the words have nothing to do with death, nothing to do with mourning, uh, none of that. Um, it goes back to understand the Kaddish in, in a way. Uh, by the way, uh, I, if you look through uh, the most famous uh, interpreting rabbi, you know, the rabbi that gives most interpretations on Jewish traditions, um, uh, Rabbi Google, uh, if you ask Rabbi Google, uh, what is the history of the Kaddish or how did uh, Kaddish become the mourner's prayer? Uh, he gives you several answers and conflicting answers. Um, the best source I have it because um, I'm, uh, I, I trust him to be pretty accurate in um, his depiction of the history of the Tfilot. And that's, um, this is a book called Jewish Worship by Abraham Milgram. And he, he discusses, the way he puts it is if we go back to the original form of, um, shall we say, public gatherings, uh, you know, even the, during the time when the temple was uh, in existence, there would be these gatherings for these, um, st actually it was starting for a study group. But there was a certain ritual that the, the, the groups used to take. They used to start by reciting the Ten Commandments and then reciting the Shema and then getting into whatever um, topic they wanted to discuss that day. Uh, and then uh, ultimately what happened, there became a time for some standing silent prayer. Uh, and then the uh, leader of the session would close it off by reciting a form of the Kaddish. Um, not completely sure which form was the first, but ultimately it became the form that we know as the Kaddish to Rabbanan. You know, the one that says, you know, I uh, used to Tommy Day, Tommy Day, you know, on Israel, uh, for Israel, for the rabbis, for the disciples of the rabbis, etc. <laughs> Am I getting sound from something else, or something's yeah, bleeding? People who people have to un, have to mute themselves because you're getting the the, the sound from their speakers back in their microphone. There. Okay, anyway, um, so it became, you know, a, um, a prayer for dismiss. It's, he calls it a prayer of dismissal. Uh, what happened is that when one of the scholars who was leading the session passed away, uh, it became they decided at the end of Shiva uh, to have a, a uh, discussion session that would be dedicated to his memory. Uh, and as they ended that up with the Kaddish, it became an association now with, uh, with death and, and the end of mourning. Um, according to Milgram now, as we, go through the years, this practice expanded. And just as the whole ritual of those study groups ultimately uh, morphed into what we now call as uh, our daily prayer and the structure for the daily prayer, uh, the Kaddish also grew and became, uh, well, the first reaction was, well, if we're doing it for these scholars, why aren't we doing it for everybody? And so more people, they used to say a Kaddish for more people. And then, okay, now we have it as a general practice. Um, and I, I think that, to me, that makes sense. I know there are some other theories out there of how uh, Kaddish got in here. Um, but, you know, 
if we're going to speculate, I'll take that as the uh, at the head of the line. And I, I really think it is a, a bit speculative because obviously nobody sat down and just as we write books on the history of Tefillo nowadays, nobody wrote them, wrote those books back then. Uh, also, if we look and, and try to find what is it or why do we tell people that they should say Kaddish? Um, what is it that uh, we're supposed to accomplish by doing that? Now, one of the reasons I got started on this for right now is that uh, Nathan Englander has a new book out. Uh, it's called Kaddish.com, uh, um, which, by the way, is an actual web page. And I'm pretty sure it, uh, from what I can see from the web page, it came out as a result of the book. But in any event, uh, in this book, the um, the protagonist can't remember his name. Uh, his father his father passes away. Uh, his mother has already gone, and he is sitting shiva in his sister's house. Um, he he at the time of the beginning of the book he is a secularist. Um, the sister is. Uh, uh, well, from, got, you know, not, not Hasidic, just from, uh, I get the picture that, I get the sense that she wasn't super from, uh, but relatively from, and one of her concerns is that, is since it's only the men that daven, and the brother is kind of off the track a little bit, um, no one's saying Kaddish for their uh, father, and she has she and the uh, the rabbi, uh, her rabbi, gang up on the uh, on the brother and get him to agree that okay he'll say Kaddish every day for the eleven months that he has to say Kaddish for his father. Uh, and then he immediately sees a uh, an ad for somebody who will say Kaddish for you. This is Kaddish.com. Uh, for, for certain amounts of money, somebody will help you fulfill your obligation to say Kaddish. Um, this, by the way, is not unique. There are many places that you can do that uh, for varying amounts and with varying legitimacy. Um, so anyway, he uh, he he uh, pays, sends in the money to this, uh, to this uh, yeshiva, and they're going to get one of the yeshiva bokers to say Kaddish for him, send him a picture of the guy who's doing it, and everything is hunky-dory. Well, they move on to the next part of the book where years later, this guy himself has become from, um, and very, you know, even frumer than the sister, and it starts gnawing on him uh, that he he shirked his duty and he passed it off to this um, to this other to this kid, and uh, he has to go find out who this kid is and get back his responsibility because he shirked his responsibility as the firstborn. He has to buy it back from this guy, and then leads to the real plot of the book. I won't go on from there because some of you might want to read it and it's a very interesting, um, well, I found it interesting the way it goes on. Um, but what also struck me was the motivation of why he wanted to do all this. And, it's, and it says he wants to do it because the soul of his father is in jeopardy. Um, and if he can't be sure that Kaddish was said for the father every day, or at least just about every day, the uh, father's soul would be doomed to a neither heaven nor hell, but kind of a suspended in a, you know, what do I want to call it, a so-so land that you're neither here nor there. 
uh, and that bothers him and he wants to get, get to the root of it. Um, so what, what, I, what, what, that, what got to me on that is this whole issue is that, is that the way that we respond to Kaddish? Do we really think um, that our loved one's soul is, is really dependent on whether we say the Kaddish? And, and by the way, this is what I was taught when I went to Hebrew school, that, that you do it for the soul. Go ahead, Cheryl. All right. My father was not a religious man at all. In fact, he didn't even believe in religion. He thought I was funny when I did my things. But when he died, for some, I felt saying Kaddish for him to let him know he was important to me, even though he didn't feel the same way I felt. Every day I was thinking about him uh, and saying Kaddish. Can you elaborate a little bit in, that? In, term, in, term, no. in terms of what it was that you were thinking about when you thought about your father? I think she's frozen. I just wanted him to know he was important to me. I didn't, he didn't feel important to anybody. I, he was a very humble guy and didn't have much self-esteem. And I wanted him to know, even though he didn't believe in this, for him, I was doing this every day so that he would know I was thinking about him. Okay, we're having a little bit of trouble with your sound. So if, if I can just try to... Did you hear uh, that? Did that come through? Um, it's probably, it's, you know, it happens on Zoom that sometimes it comes in a little bit, uh, you know, fuzzy. No, it wasn't. But anyway, uh, let, me, let me recap what you said, okay? And, and uh, you said, you know, you're thinking about him. I think even though he wasn't uh, necessarily that observant a person. And, you know, I think you also said that um, he didn't have a high self-esteem and you felt that by you saying Kaddish every day would um, help let him know that somebody felt strongly about him and remembered him and wanted to uh, carry that on. Am I, am I accurate on that? Okay. Uh, Art. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I never, I never thought that that my saying Kaddish would would do anything for my father. I thought, you know, he's gone and and he's not going to know whether I'm saying Kaddish or not. Um, I I always thought, thought of Kaddish as kind of like Mishaberach, where uh, you it's a way to do something in the face of a situation where there is really nothing you can do uh, to to make things better. Um, uh, it, it's a way of letting you feel better, feel that, feel as if you're doing something. You know, uh, you know, my, my wife, you know, Janet, uh, was always, she, she was afraid when my father died that I would, quote, go over to the dark side. And, um, and so she was happy that I was doing this. Uh, uh, it was a way of of just being, you know, being grounded in the face of something about which I, I really could do nothing. Okay. Anybody else? I I kind of did it to do it, did it, and do it, you know, all that, because uh, when my father was really sick, he said, "Don't." You know, I had a good life. Don't, you know, be sad. Be sad for a little bit, but do the right thing. And I think when he said he meant do the right thing, I think he wanted me to say, you know, Kaddish for him. So. Anybody else? Yeah, in, in my case, it was a little bit different. My, my father's um, spiritual life had an interesting trajectory. He grew up in an observant home and basically Davin laid fill in every morning until he was 23 when he left the house and then never looked back. Um, 
and we we grew up in what was um, a, I would say a marginally observant home. I mean, we we certainly observed the holidays, um, but what what I came away with as a as a as a young person was almost a sense of of disdain um, for my my uh, my grandfather's uh, observance. Um, my grandfather, I mean, was was always observant. I remember one time my folks were away. I was staying with my grandparents, or they had come over our house, <coughs> and we had a, a Friday night Cub Scout meeting <coughs> at the uh, at the primary school, and uh, uh, he was going to take me over there. And I walked out the front door and headed for his car. He says, "No, don't, Dougie. He doesn't do that on Shabbat." On Shabbos, he says, you can't take the machine. So we ended up walking uh, a mile and a half. Um, but as, as, as I got older and as my father got older, I realized that he had this tremendous respect um, f for my grandfather and, and also a very warm place in his heart um, for his own traditional upbringing and, and early practice. So that when when he passed, um, saying Kaddish was was really at least in part uh, a matter of of honoring that that uh, that inner attachment that he had, and I I know it's something that that would would have brought him joy. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? What about the words of the Kaddish? Did any of you find any, um, shall I say, attachment to the words or anything that drew you into them? I was, um, I'd say I was drawn in not by the meaning of the words, but just by the, um, the poetry of the word, the, the rhythm, the, um, the, just by the Hebrew. I mean, I, I, I never really paid much attention to what it meant, but it was something that was very familiar to me and uh, that I felt comfortable saying. Yep. You know, I, I guess there's a one other one other story I could probably tell. Uh, anybody, you guys heard the word doxology? A couple of nods. Um, well, the first time I ever I remember the first time I ever heard the word. Um, back in the early 70s, it was uh, like a year or two after I finished the seminary. Um, <coughs> the chancellor at the seminary was Louis Finkelstein. Um, President Nixon used to have these prayer services at the White House. Am I the only one that remembers that? Um, and he, Finkelstein was asked to come and offer a, um, a prayer during one of these prayer services. And he went and um, he recited the uh, Kaddish de Rabbanan. Uh, it was at the end of the, uh, of the session and he, and he recited. Well, he took a lot of flack for that, um, mainly because uh, Nixon uh, up until recently was probably the least popular president um, and um, certainly uh, this was in the height of anti-war activities and um, gosh I guess I'm with a group when I can say anti-war activities and everybody knows which war I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, um, Anyway, um, so he uh, he took a lot, and he says, 
what's the problem? I only went there and recited the doxology. Um, and everybody found out what a doxology was. Um, it's, uh, so, so, so anyway, that's uh, any, any other reactions, any uh, to the whole idea of Kaddish, the words, the sense of it? Um, it it's, you know, for, for someone who hasn't sort of been through or familiar with practice, um, what happens when a parent or a spouse, whatever, dies, um, you know, and they see Kaddish, they may know the Hebrew, and they look at the English, they, they may know the Hebrew, they may not know the English, but if you look at the English, the, the first reaction I think people must have is, holy cow, like, it's like, what, like, nothing just happened, and now we have to, we have to say it. I, I think there's a, there's an affirmation to it that, I think initially after, I mean, this is what I, I felt when my father died 35, six years ago, um, that it, it was really hard to sort of say Kaddish knowing what it meant at the time when, you know, there had been so much um, anguish and suffering in the family about everything. And then you realize that, you know, this is sort of um, part of life and, you know, all of what you have, good and bad, is as a result of, you know, you're, you're given your, you're given your portion, you have what you have, in all respects, because of God, and this is the, the reaffirmation of it, and I think over time, I got more comfortable with that, and then when my mom died in May, it, it was just, it was a natural thing, I didn't, I didn't feel the same kind of reaction maybe it was just being accustomed to it but you know it's it, when you read it it's or, or even when it's said you know it's said at a cemetery in a, in a funeral it's, it's very hard to have that juxtaposed with you know the, the sadness and the grief that, that a person's experiencing um yeah thank you um i, I you know there have been a few times when, uh, you know, I go to a Shiva minion, um, and um, especially if it's a minion where they do milcha, and then there's a little bit of time before we do marv, and somebody says, well, say something, you know, and, uh, you know, what am I supposed to do, give another eulogy? Um, but no, in any, uh, I'm kidding around, but I, I think it's a serious moment. Um, but one of the things that I like talking about is what is one of the most popular reasons for why we say Kaddish? And that is at a time when people are at a um, point of severe, the, the, the severest grief or the strongest uh, emotion of the grief, uh, and what, what you really want to do is dig a hole and, and feel sorry for yourself. And yet, we as Jews tell you, uh, you know, you got to get in there and not only uh, show yourself in public, but you have to publicly recite this, uh, this, no other way of putting it, but no, but cite this doxology, this prayer of praise to God. You know, God has just dealt you a horrible hand, and now we're going to tell you to get up there and um, and praise Him, um, which I think is similar to what you you were saying, um, and I think that's one of one of the effects that it does have. Um, I I see, and I, I'm not I'm going to make a generalization, and I I'm, I know that. Um, I can I can blow some holes in it too, but I, I, I still think there's some some sense to it. That nowadays um, people are very in tune to excuse me, what people in the business called anticipatory grief. And and that is um, you know, I I remember in um, when I was, when I saw my, uh, say my grandparents' generation, 
when they were dying, um, grief was very strong and very outward because people went around with the sense that they're going to get better. Tomorrow they're going to be okay. Uh, nobody's going to die. We're going to keep on going and boom, there they go. And everybody is, is really, you know, the weeping, the crying, and the, and the, the screaming um, was there. And I think nowadays we have a more, uh, I'd like to say, a realistic approach in the sense that, you know, more well-informed than exactly what illnesses are going on, what's, what's happening, and therefore are better prepared for when, uh, when death does come, and therefore we don't have that type of thing. And therefore, you know, in, in some sense, the cottage takes on a little bit of different meaning. Um, but I don't want to get on the uh, preaching box with this much. I'd rather hear, you know, if anybody else has other reactions or any comments they want to make. You know, as, as the conversation is going on more, a, a, another thought occurred to me. In, in some way, Kaddish um, recapitulates the dialogue between God and Yonah uh, with the death of the plant. Um, it, it, it almost invites us to, to understand that, that there's a sense of loss um, for God as well. And and that it's it's a shared loss. Interesting. Uh, all right. Yeah, uh, you you point two things. First, your point about um, uh, grief being a little different these days, approach to death being different. I think I think the average cardiologist could tell you that the number of uh, sudden deaths from from uh, cardiac uh, incidents is way lower than it was back in you know 1950 1960 so you don't have you don't have people um, <clears throat> at least as much experiencing you know the sudden death of a you know 45 or 50 year old relative the other thing though is about about Kaddish, again, uh, putting aside the meaning, I think <clears throat> I think it's much easier for people to say something that is prepared for them, that is there for them. Uh, if you were to tell somebody it's important that you get up and you express uh, some original thoughts about the deceased, I think most people find that, you know, kind of, kind of difficult. Um, they do it, but it's not easy it's a lot easier to be given this prayer. And I don't think the words matter at all. The fact is it's there. And if someone says, say this, this is what people have been saying for centuries. And, and it's, uh, and, and you'll feel, you know, it'll, it'll be cathartic for you to say this. Um, I think it's a lot easier. I, I would add to that, that not just the Kaddish, but the whole sense of uh, all the other, you know, mourning practices. Um, you know, Shiva, uh, or, or first of all, you know, those who follow, you know, the idea of the Tahara and, and what happens before the burial, um, the whole way that we do the burial quickly, you know, with respect for uh, the dead and the body and the way it's done. Um, to me, it also says that, you know, we do a burial, not a, a cremation or embalmment. In embalmment. Uh, and then go into the Shiva. And even, I think even the sense where we become more aware of the practice of ending Shloshim, um, which I've found, you know, very recently, uh, people really taking to. And I think that also, that's the structure that you're talking about that, you know, you know, we, we need the structure. I mean, what's, what's, I, I think in many ways, what's the uh, second most, probably the third most popular book on people's bookshelves. Uh, if you go into somebody's home, you probably have a Chumash, a Sitter, and Maurice Lamb's Jewish Way on Death and Mourning. Uh, 
without making a value judgment on the book. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it detailed, you know, he said, what were you supposed to do? How is it done? Mort, Mort, I, you know, it's I'm thinking back to when I was saying Kaddish, and it, and I, it, it's, it strikes me that it, that I realized a lot. I learned that which I did not know before or didn't fully appreciate before about the extent to which um, our ritual is um, has a certain rhythm in terms of the way the we the, the, as we pass the year um, the 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 and um, and and I think that that rid the 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 saying Kaddish for eleven months underscored um, that rhythm to me that kind of the way life goes on in a in a cycle um, and and being in the minion for purposes of saying Kaddish is what gave me the opportunity to learn that and and it's interesting to me that during this most during this um, pandemic. When I come back to have, have used minion, morning minion um, as a vehicle for kind of establishing a, a, a structure to my day um, in a way that it hadn't been for the years in between the Kaddish and now, the last time I said Kaddish regularly for, for my mother, um, it, it, it all, it re, it's reinforced for me again that kind of temporal aspect of our observance. Um, and I think that that's an, a very interesting um, teaching slash learning opportunity. Um, yeah, Jenny. I, I think uh, I didn't really thought about what Art had said about it being easier when you hand somebody a text than expecting them to get up and say something, particularly on the spur of the moment. And I've really noticed that now that I'm at uh, the Minion a lot more, now that I don't have to get up and go outside. Um, I'm, especially today. I, uh, especially today. Um, but there are a few people when asked, do you want to say something about the person for whom you are saying Kaddish? Some say no, but after being taken aback, because clearly a lot of these people did not expect it, they will say something and often very moving but it is so obvious they would rather be handed something to say. But people don't find that easy. I mean, unless this is something you do all the time, like being a rabbi, uh, you have to stand up and say something uh, off the cuff uh, frequently. I, th I think that's very true, um, I, and and I think that um, there's I, I you know <laughs> me too. I'm think I'm flashing back to some of my own experiences, and um, my father, who was a teacher, uh, never liked to talk about anybody who was dead. Um, for reasons he could never explain. Um, even my, I have a vivid memory of, uh, we were doing the uh, stone setting for my uncle, his brother. And before we went to the cemetery, I asked him, I said, you know, what, what do you want me to say about Uncle Ben? Um, you know, he couldn't answer that. Um, which is the way my father was, and you know, it was, uh, you know, in one sense, I found it disappointing, 
um, because if he would tell me things, then I wouldn't have to think of it myself. Uh, but, <laughs> but in the sense, um, you know, I understood it though, because that's the, you know, that he had other things that would, was, that was very consistent to a lot of things that he, uh, he also did. And, uh, you know, and, and, you know, you have to respect that in other people, you know, um, I think like, you know, Ginny's saying here, there are some times that we get used to doing this type of thing. Um, but other people don't. You know, they're, to them, it's still new. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like you go, uh, you go into a doctor and they say, don't worry, what we're about to do to you is very routine. Yes. Says, yeah, it's routine to you, but it's only the first time I've done it. Uh. Uh, you know, and, and frankly, saying Kaddish and being involved in, in grief and mourning uh, is, is right up in there in the same in the same type of situation. Okay. Um, okay. I I uh, I, I want to thank everyone. Uh, I think. Thank you. Well, no, I, I thank you for sharing because, you know, like just we're saying here, you know, not everybody wants to open up and share these type of things. And some people want to keep it very personal and will will respect that. Um, and, and sometimes uh, this is not always an easy topic to talk about, although I think we've had a nice flowing discussion. And uh, anybody thinks of anything else that they want to add, you know, between now and next Monday, um, we can always uh, start off discussing it more. Uh, so, uh, again, uh, happy end of Yontif. Have a good week, everyone. Have a good day. Uh, stay dry. Um, it's, I think, for the first time in uh, how many months that we could say, uh, thank God I, don't, I can't go anyplace. And uh, all my appointments today are online. <laughs> So, right. Yeah. I don't know. I have to go down to the stadium and pick up my cardboard version of myself that was sitting at Citizens Bank Park because today. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That's That's true. True. Activity besides okay. work. So. Well, I got another meeting. I got to go prepare for a okay. pleasure. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thank you.